for quite some time now I planned on shooting a minimalist series with a model in a white cube setting focusing on their poses and their emotions. The visual concept is to lend the images a floaty allure and to amalgamate this with a classic 80s style color palette. This video will walk you through my process and illustrate all the creative choices I made along the way so you can create something similar on your own. In order to get authentic color reproduction like in vintage magazines, I decided to shoot this series on slide film because slide film was in the 80s and 90s the number one choice for high-end professional productions. I went for Fujifilm Provia 100F in medium format. As the choice of camera impacts the workflow on set and therefore also the result significantly, I decided to keep it real in this field as well. So I picked my Hasselblad 500cm with the size planner 100mm 3.5. The focal length is an excellent choice for studio work as long as you don't want to get really close for portraits. Working with a film camera like the Hasselblad makes the work on set slower but also more deliberate and more focused. However, there is one downside to the use of slide film. It requires very precise exposure metering. So I pre-planned my lighting setup for this shoot very carefully. Let's take a look at our lighting setup. This is a white paper background and it extends almost up to the camera, which is placed here. This doesn't look like a Hasselblad, but it is one, trust me. The subject is placed 2 to 3 meters in front of the white paper background. And that's the nose. And as a key light, we're gonna put a big octobox on the right of the subject. This octobox is accompanied by a smaller octobox on the left of the subject. The lighting ratio for this setup is 2 to 1. This means that the key light over here is one exposure value brighter than the fill light and this means that this one is providing twice as much illumination as this one. So it's 2 to 1. In order to get an even white background we have to illuminate the background as well because right now there would be considerable light fall off and the background would appear like grey. In order to get such an even white background I set up two strip lights with grids to mitigate stray light. That's the grid. The light of these two background lights is set to match the exposure value of our key light plus one third of a stop. So there is a little bit extra to get the background really white. Now with this setup the awesome thing is that by turning the subject either to the main light, to the key light or away from the key light you can get different shadows and different contrast ratios on your subject. You can mix things up by turning either the body or just the head to create very different looks without changing the setup. If we examine the first image, we can see that the lighting is even but with enough contrast to create some tension. This becomes even more apparent if we take a look at this headshot. You can see the one stop difference in lighting on her face 
compared to her back. Taking a look at the third image, the vignette on the background adds more focus on the subject and was created solely by placing the background lights correctly. There was nothing done in post-production. On to the last image. We can see that thanks to the size and placement of the main octabox on Katarina's right side, her hands holding the jacket in front of her face don't result in harsh shadows. Oh, and by the way, the colors of these images were not adjusted in post-production. These are the original Fuji Provia 100F colors, looking just like the vintage magazines we tried to emulate. So I hope this video inspired you to go to the studio and try something similar. Consider subscribing and following on Instagram. See you next time. Thank you.